everybody. I want us to have one focus. Ministers can take the front seat or come closer. Media, you have too many people there. Just one person. I need only one person in the media. Everybody take a seat. Forward, please. If the fan is too much, if it's feeling like an AC, please, you are free to put it up. Praise the Lord. Our Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you adoration. The first Sunday of this beautiful month, the ninth month in 2022, we have come to give ourselves away. Lord, because we know that without you, we are nothing. And it is in you that we have life. And it is in you that our life can move. Lord God Almighty, we give ourselves away to you. The song of dedication sung by the choir that reminds us of the fact that we are nothing without you and that we can achieve nothing without you. So Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, that as we give ourselves to you, let your light shine in our hearts. Take all the glory, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Pastor Ajayi, welcome back to church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I said you should tell somebody, welcome back to church. So I tell the person I like. So, welcome back to church. Amen. I love that song. It's, it's ringing in my mind. I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Lord, I don't want to hold anything. I give you everything. Amen, church. Amen. Amen, church. This is indeed a month of fruitfulness. Because we are having another baby dedication at the back. <laughs> so, amen. Last week, Sunday, there was a baby dedication. This week again, another baby dedication. Praise the Lord. Are we not fruitful? Is God not good? So today we are quickly going to look at the word of God in line with the message for the month. The word of God in line with the message for the month. Amen. Turn your Bible with me to Psalm 107. We're going to take all the scriptures before we go. Psalm 107. We're going to end in verse 8. And I want everyone to read it at the same time. 1, 2. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy is endured forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gather them out of the land, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way, and they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. 
and he led them forth by the right uh, way, and they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Praise the Lord. Let's look at um, Psalm 67 verse 5. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7. Psalm 67 is a very good psalm. Very popular scripture. If you are in verse 5, say, I am there. If you are not there, say, wait for me. Let the Lord, okay, from verse 5. Let the people do what? Praise thee. O God, let all the people praise thee. Let, then shall the earth yield our increase. And God, even our God, shall bless you. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall do what? Fear him. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5.20. Ephesians 5.20. Give myself away so you can use me. Ephesians 5.20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself unto another in the fear of God. That's a different sermon entirely. But today, what we are looking at is the fruitfulness in thanksgiving. We all know that September is a month of fruitfulness. It's a month of bringing forth. It's a month where carryover is not allowed, but taking over is allowed. Amen. Now, as our first Sunday, which is the, the week of Thanksgiving, I want us to see, or the Lord wants us to look at, what can enhance your fruitfulness? To be fruitful is to do what? To flourish. To be fruitful is to bear fruit. To be fruitful is to be able to be bringing forth. You and I know how Jesus cursed that fig tree. He looked at the tree. He was angry that the tree was not fruitful. And instead of prophesying for the tree to be fruitful, he cursed the tree and the tree dried up. What it means is that as children of God, you and I need to be fruitful at all times. If you are not fruitful, the small you have will be taken away from you. Are you listening to me? The small you have will be taken away from you. I don't feel that God created anybody barren. I don't feel that God created anybody useless. I don't feel that God created anybody a non-entity. No. Every one of us has something to offer. Tell your neighbor you got something to offer. Babe, you have something to offer. Tell the brother you have something to offer. Say, guy, you have something to offer. God did not allow any dryness. He did not allow any vacuum. That was why when he came in Genesis 1, he looked at the earth and he said, let there be light. And God began to prophesy to everything that brought about us today. And it took him six days to create the head. What it therefore means is that God likes us to be busy. And that's why in Genesis 20, can you see Genesis 1 28? Genesis 1 28. It said, Be fruitful. So God bless them. If you want to show me a man that God has blessed, I will show you a man that is fruitful. He said, God bless them. And he said to them, be fruitful. Child of God, that is the first commandment on earth to man. After God has blessed them, that means there is nobody that is cursed. You can only be cursed if you stray out of the garden. You can only be cursed if you do abominable things. 
But as soon as you are born to this earth, as soon as you are formed in your mother's womb, God said, you are blessed. Tell your neighbor you are blessed. Tell yourself, I am blessed. Then the next assignment to being blessed is to be fruitful. Meaning that God wants every one of us to bring forth fruit at all times. Fruitfulness is for you to be able to multiply. And that's why the scripture says, be fruitful. Then continue to multiply. Replenish the head. When, when Gary finishes in the house, what do you do? You replenish it. That's why I said seed time and harvest time does not fail. That is part of his creational blessings to us. So God wants us to be fruitful at all times. God wants us to multiply. You marry, have children. You have a job, be promoted. You go to school, move from one class to the other. It is the devil that brings desolation and barrenness. It is the devil that brings dry, dryness. And so, if your life is not making progress, child of God, if you are not fruitful, check, maybe the devil is your co-roommate. Check, maybe you are making him your tenant in your house. If you don't see any sign of fruitfulness, then check if you had made Satan your neighbor. Because there is no one that stays with God that will not replenish, that will not multiply, that will not subdue the head, that is not entitled to have dominion. I pray dominion for you and I today. Have dominion over the fishes in the sea, the birds in the air. Have dominion over the animals. Those words are deep. And I pray that the almighty God will show us real dominion in Jesus' name. Now, we have been saying be fruitful. God wants us to be fruitful. Child of God, in this very short message, I'd like you to look at something. How can I be fruitful? A child who comes to the father in the morning and say, Oh, daddy, thank you. Thank you for what you bought for my brother yesterday. Thank you for what you bought for my sister. Thank you for the shoe you bought for me. As a parent, what will you do? You will ask him, son, is there anything you want? Do you want me to buy anything for you? The one I bought for you, is it still okay? A son that calls you and says, Mommy, thank you for my, my, my stipends. You'll be like, do you need more? Why? Because of the attitude of gratitude. The attitude of what? Gratitude. Amen. A lot of us are where we are. We are stagnated and limited because we do not imbibe in the attitude of gratitude. The morning you woke up and some other people had died, that's the morning you start saying, oh God, I don't wake up for this kind of Nigeria again. Uh, when will someone move to the next level now? And you do what? You shroud the morning with complain. You shroud your day with discontention. Before you even prophesy or speak to the day, you are filled with complain. I've seen somebody who says, Lord, thank you because I am healed. And cancer went away every morning. Thank you because I'm healed. Thank you because I am well. I pray that the Almighty God will give us an attitude of gratitude. Now, today being our first Thanksgiving day, our first Sunday in the week, our Thanksgiving day, what will Thanksgiving do for you? If you don't thank God, you cannot be fruitful. Write it down. If you don't thank God, you cannot be fruitful. And then secondly, child of God, what will thanksgiving do for you? Can you ask your neighbor, what will thanksgiving do for you? Thanksgiving is to thank God. Remember that leper in the Bible that was healed? Only the one that came to thank Jesus Christ. 
the Bible said that he was made whole. Meaning those other people did what? They were healed, but they were not made whole. For the English students in the class, we can go and look at the difference between being healed and being made whole. So thanksgiving will increase your faith in God. Anytime you wake up in the morning and Pastor Mabude says, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my daughter. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my good. It will increase your faith in God. If you thank God ahead for the journey and you go to the bus stop and you stand for five minutes and there is no bus coming, you will have this confidence that because you have thanked God, bus have to come. Do you understand? You wake up in the morning and the, 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 your daughter comes and say, gas has finished. Gary has finished. Rise has finished. And you look up, up to the sky. You know that you have thanked God. Abi, you have thanked him for provision. You have this confidence that surely, surely God will provide. So when you thank God, it will increase your faith in God. It will make you believe in his ability to make your future better. I want us to immediately raise our hand and say, Lord, I thank you because I know my tomorrow is good. I thank you because my future is good. I thank you because greater is he that lives in me. I thank you because I am well. I am a warrior. I am a victor. Thank you because I am blessed. Thank you because the glory of the Lord is upon me. Thanksgiving is very good. When you thank God, what will he do? Write it down. It will increase your faith in God. Please let's imbibe the attitude of thanksgiving. The only way you can be fruitful is if you thank God. And when you thank God, it will increase your faith in God. Number two, it will increase your love for God. Have you seen somebody who say, Oh, Baba, I thank you. You begin to remember the good things that God has done for you and your family. And you begin to tell him thank you. What will you do? You will love God. All of a sudden, you will just burst start singing. I give myself away so you can use me. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you because I'm well. A lot of things that you see around me or around us today came as a product of thanksgiving. It came as a product of thanksgiving. You may be seeing the opposite thing, but I am thanking God for you daily. I'm thanking God for what he will do. I'm thanking God for where I will go to. I'm thanking God for what I expect him to do. I'm thanking him for my health. So thanksgiving is very crucial. Thanksgiving is the eyes of the future. When you see into your tomorrow and you know that your tomorrow is great and you begin to thank God for it, thanksgiving is the eyes of the future. God, who invariably that will, will be pleased with you, will bring it to pass. A lot of us only learn to go to God when there are trouble. And when everything is well, we don't remember to thank him. When everything is perfect, we don't remember to thank him. Child of God, this little trick, if you learn it and do it, it will be like trick to the enemy. The devil will say, what's the difference about her? I tell your neighbor, the difference is thanksgiving. Amen. So number three, it is only those who love God deeply that can thank him deeply. When you love God deeply, you will thank him regularly. So like I said, that thanksgiving will increase your love for God. So when you love God, you will thank him regularly. So number three, thanksgiving or thanking God will make you happy in Christ Jesus. Say rejoice, O you that are barren. Rejoice. For great or many are the children of the desolate. Why would God tell a barren person to rejoice? Why? Because God knows. He says, sing. Sing, O ye barren. 
Praise the Lord. It is because when the baron is happy, when the baron thanks God, when the baron rejoices, God will make them fruitful. Amen. So thanksgiving will make you happy. It will make you rejoice. And the more you thank God for your blessings, the more you will be happy and the more increase will come your way. Amen. Somebody say, Lord, I will always thank you. To be thankful is to be content. Show me a man that is not content. Show me a man that is not satisfied. Show me a man that is always needing. Is a man that is not thankful. Are you hearing me? You are not thankful. You are waiting for the big one for you to be able to say thank you. The small messes that God gives to you, you are not thankful. Please tell your neighbor, learn to be thankful. Be content. Tell your neighbor, thanksgiving brings content. While ingratitude is a product of unfruitfulness. What's the meaning of ingratitude? They say, ah, see how they shine now. Instead of you to grab it and say, thank God. I'm arising, I am shining, it is well with me. You just say, mm, I beg you. You've forgotten that that comment was an opportunity for you to thank God. Thanksgiving is very good. It's a product of fruitfulness. But when you are ungrateful, unfruitfulness will come your way. Is there anybody who is ungrateful that they are alive? Is there anybody who wants to end it all and say, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm tired, and you want to end it all? God will not allow that in the name of Jesus. Number four, which is our last one for, to, for today, thankfulness will increase your holiness. It will make you more holy before God, and it will make you keep away from sin. Try it. Whenever you wake up for the rest of this month, just thank, thanking God. When you thank God, you will be more holy. When you thank God, you will not want to displease God because you will be conscious of the presence of God. Do I have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house? When you thank God, you will want to keep away from sin. So thanksgiving will increase your holiness before God and it will make you to keep away from sin. If you are wise as a child of God, the best thing to do is to thank God. It is not only when you ask that God will give you. Sometimes you can ask in the process of thanking. Father, I thank you because in Jesus' name it is well with me. I thank you because my visa is settled. I thank you because I'm going to be married. Thank you because I'm going to build a house. Thank you because I'm going to buy a car. Thank you, Lord, because you understand. Instead of saying, every demon that will not allow me to buy this car, that, 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 you spend and waste time. I buy in the lotto, hey. But sometimes, Thanksgiving is a shortcut. Daddy Joe, um, I think uh, in the last camp meeting we listened to, he said the Lord said somebody came to camp with something that looks like a baby. Meaning that that woman had wrapped maybe clothes or something and she carried her as baby and she said she's going to dance and God will give her baby. You wake up every morning, put clothes in your stomach and tie it and begin to show, say, Lord, I thank you because I am pregnant with three plates. When you dance for one hour, drop, the, drop it and go about your normal activity. Do it. Before you reach nine months, the babies will be there. It's an act of faith. Thanksgiving is an act of faith. Amen. The young lady who sang, I want to be a billionaire. She's a billionaire today now. She sang what she wants to be. The young boy who sang that he wants to have more money than his father. I'm sure his money is almost more than his father. Adelike's son. 
Uh, and he is aspiring to have more money than Dangote. Maybe one day, very soon. He sang it. So as believers, as Christians, as children of God, you must thank God for what you want in your life. What you want to see, the you you want to become. And when all of that is in place, it will change your story. Can we rise up on our feet? If you are here, you are not used to thanking God, you are used to complaining. This is the time to repent. Because let me tell you something. Thanksgiving brings contentment. It will make you happy. But if you know that you have not been thanking God, this is the time to repent. Say, Father, please have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me my ingratitude. Forgive me my faithlessness. Forgive me my lack of love for you. Help me to thank you so that I can be fruitful. Forgive me, Almighty God. I surrender my life to you. And if you are even here at the sound of my voice, you have not even given your life to Jesus. How would you be thankful? Say, Lord, this is the time I come to render my service to you. Have mercy on me. Lord, show me a token for good. Lord, heal me, forgive me, deliver me, save me, set me free. I give you my life. Get up and talk to God. If you want to kneel down, kneel down. If you want to get up, get up. Say, Lord, forgive me. For all the times that I've grumbled, forgive me. All the times that I've grumbled, forgive me. Help me, O God. I want us to begin to thank God. Father, I thank you for bringing me to the ninth month. I thank you for showing me mercy. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for loving me. Lord, I thank you for loving me. I thank you, O God, for making me who I am. Begin to thank the Lord. Open your mouth, child of God, and thank God. Don't wait for anything and anyone to prompt you. Thank God I'm not in the hospital. Thank God I am not dead. Thank God that I am fruitful. Thank God I am going to a new class. Children, thank God you are going to a new class. Thank God for all that he's been doing. Thank him for what he will continue to do. Thank him. Begin to thank him. It's done so much for me. I cannot tell you no. Sing it quiet, please. If I had ten thousand dollars. 